this one is live. <coughs> the, uh, uh, the question I have is in, in uh, the testimony of a number of the witnesses we've had and of course in Mr. Clark's book, uh, your Pentagon comes in t uh, for a lot of criticism for basically uh, along two lines, the most important of which uh, is that uh, whenever there was uh, an opportunity and a request for options, when the president requested options and so forth, uh, the only thing the Joint Chiefs could come up with, uh, the Pentagon could come up with, was either lob a few cruise missiles or the Normandy invasion. And uh, I recall the, the debates over the creation of the Special Operations Command in which I was initially skeptical and uh, became a strong advocate as you laid out the case very well for that legislation, which was to provide a president with something in between a much more discriminating set of options uh, b between uh, the kind of things that came out of the chiefs all those decades, which is either launch an alpha strike from the carriers, send in the 101 Airborne, uh, or carpet bomb with B-52s. And yet, uh, it, it seems that uh, every time that the request was made for some set of options, at least this is the testimony we have, uh, the alternative was always given, well, we can't, we can't invade Afghanistan, Congress will never do it, so the only thing we have is to fire a, a few cruise missiles. And clearly, as Senator Kerry was suggesting, there are lots of potential discrete options in between, like putting uh, specialized special operations forces uh, on the ground. Now, this is before, yes, it takes 13,000 today and they can't find him, but before, before the war in Afghanistan, there was a lot of, uh, there, he was much more accessible. So there were options, but somehow the Special Operations Command either did not because it was, as our staff pointed out, uh, a supporting rather than a supported command, uh, or because not much has changed after all these years with the new Operations Command, did not come up with discrete options. Uh, why was that? And is, is Mr. Clark's criticism a valid one? Well, uh, first I would take issue with the fact that uh, the Joint Chiefs of Staff can only uh, go from B-1 bombers um, or cruise missiles or the uh, Normandy invasion. If you look at uh, what took place uh, in both Bosnia and Kosovo, uh, Special Forces played a, a key role uh, over there uh, in terms of some of these operations. Uh, JSOC was always on tap uh, to do whatever was reasonable to do. Uh, I would uh, have to place my judgment and a call in terms of do I believe that the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs, former Commander of Special uh, Forces Command, uh, is in a better position to make a judgment about the feasibility of this than perhaps Mr. Clark. Now, I had to make that kind of a call. Uh, was uh, Richard Clark in a better position to say this has a greater chance uh, of success or uh, General Shelton? I indicated that I relied upon the senior military advisor to me, the President of the National Security Team. Uh, I have no reason to uh, in any way ever doubt uh, that he was very straight with me and was not trying to um, rig the system so you only had one of two options. But rather, I think he always felt we are prepared to take action, uh, to put uh, special forces on the ground if there is a reasonable opportunity to achieve the mission. To do anything less than that, to put those young people at risk with uh, the enormity of the task of that country, that size, with that many caves, with, by the way, the support of the Taliban uh, and not the support of Pakistan, uh, I'd have to uh, question uh, whether or not that was uh, reasonable to do so. I did, and I supported the, uh, the chairman saying, this doesn't make a good deal of sense in terms of putting those, uh, those young men's uh, lives at risk when the potential for success is uh, very limited, if not de minimis. Uh, you'll be pleased to know that he's even harsher on the CIA's capability in, in these kinds of... Uh, I mean, everybody can be critical uh, of... You, know, you can criticize the agency, criticize DOD. The real issue is uh, what action do we got, take from here? Where are the fault lines? Where does fault lie? Do you, if you think that we were um, 
irresponsible in not putting a small unit into Afghanistan when you had virtually no support activities. For example, I mentioned those, uh, those operations in Kosovo. They had incredible intelligence support just tens of miles away. Now you're going to put a small unit of special forces into Afghanistan where there is no uh, intelligence support miles away, but thousands of miles away. Uh, what do you do in terms of search and rescue? This is something I know that you were concerned about, certainly as Secretary of the Navy. What about CSAR? If we lose one of our uh, pilots or lose one of our people, you've got to send in search and rescue. Well, uh, how about refuelers for the, uh, the C-130 gunships, etc.? All of those factors are involved on the part of military planning. Do you just put uh, special forces in and say, well, we know how good you are, go do the job, and good luck? The answer is no. You, you try to make sure you protect them as much as you can and measure the probability of success against the risk that they are um, uh, put at. That, that brings me to the point of, my, of these questions, really. Uh, many witnesses have criticized CIA for really not having the, the capability for uh, uh, covert operations and special operations, and yet they've been called upon to do them. On the other hand, the Pentagon has been criticized because they don't want to do them. Uh, and so I guess the question that has arisen in our minds is uh, perhaps there should be a straightforward assignment of the counterterrorism mission to, a, to SOCOM uh, and not pretend that CIA can do it with civilians and not leave, uh, leave the, uh, the Special Operations Command as just a supporting uh, operation to the sinks who are not likely to have the kind of focus for doing this that uh, that SOCOM. What would you think of that kind of reform? Well, actually, I think that Secretary Rumsfeld uh, may uh, be in the process of, uh, of recommending that. <clears throat> I think he may uh, see the use of special forces uh, in a way that uh, achieves that uh, kind of uh, central, more centralized role than being a support element and being a more uh, center player in terms of special uh, forces designed to go out and kill or capture uh, a number of the, uh, the terrorist groups. Uh, I will also <clears throat> offer... A, Another comment, if I can, in this um, war on terror. It's my own personal judgment that the war on terror is, for the most part, not going to be won on the battlefield. I really believe uh, that ultimately, aside from Iraq, which is a big aside, but aside from Iraq, I believe uh, the war has to be waged uh, by the sharing of information on a, um, almost a global basis. Uh, again, I pointed my opening statement that we're all at risk now. We have to start sharing information, and it's going to require good police work, sort of what the Brits did by knocking down the door and finding the, a group of people with ricin in their possession. Uh, uh, sharing that kind of information in covert operations, police work, special forces, and ultimately, finally, uh, the military option. But I think that that's really what's going to be required for the war against terror. And I think special forces uh, being charged with a, a higher uh, level of activity is probably warranted. One final question. <clears throat> uh, another line of criticism uh, uh, from a, a fair number of our witnesses has been that in uh, making decisions and recommendations from commanders uh, for action of this type, that there has been a huge growth in the role of general counsel, shall we say, uh, epitomized by the CENTCOM general counsel refusing to, or advising the, the sink that he could not shoot at uh, Omar because uh, that would violate the, uh, the assassination order. Uh, just as a phenomenon, well, I, I know that didn't happen on your watch, but the, just as an issue, it seems to us time and time again, we see in interviews and queries that that everyone seems to be afraid to move in, in the policy level and particularly in the Pentagon without having a, a CYA memo from the, the legal counsel. Um, I was not aware of any uh, inhibition or prohibition against uh, the Pentagon uh, taking action uh, in, directed against uh, Osama bin Laden or anyone else. Uh, there was uh, no, has, no question in my mind that the, both the agency and the uh, and the um, military had complete authority to take whatever lethal action was necessary. I never saw anything that would have inhibited that. Thank you.